Good morning, and let us pray. Holy God of justice and wisdom, we gather grateful for all your gifts, for life itself both, both fierce and frail, for opportunities of education and self-improvement, for families and friends who support, for faculty and staff who mentor, challenge, and guide, and for the strength of soul, mind, and body that bring us to this day. Accept our praise for this moment of celebration. We offer sorrowing and hearty thanks for the life of George Johnson, whom we honor in a moment of silence. We give thanks for his vision and leadership, for his friendship, warmth, and love. May his memory always increase in us justice and love. And may every person, attorney, and institution he touched be better and wiser because of his life. Tenderly support those who mourn him and give us peace. We ask blessing on these graduates, that their lives bring good to this desperate world, that they would serve those in need. Let them be agents of inclusion, advocates of the voiceless, and sources of strength and joy in their families. Make them ready for all that is before them, that they engage their calling with joy and courage. May their gratitude give them grace to be friends for you, for the sick and suffering, and for Elon. Give us your presence now, we pray, and may our joy be your delight and your praise. May it be so. Amen. Good morning, family and friends. Welcome to the Elon Law Class of 2020 Virtual Graduation Commencement. My name is Kia Barrett, and I'm a Student Bar Association President and a member of the graduating class. I really wish you were all in the room with me right now to celebrate this monumental moment, but I hope you're surrounded by your loved ones and your family and are able to feel the excitement that this day normally brings. I want to thank the faculty and administration for all the support and direction they've provided us over the two and a half years. I especially want to thank Ms. Glover and Ms. Dooley for being my emotional support and backbone during this journey. You two have been so instrumental in our success and just know that you're greatly appreciated by the class of 2020. To all the friends and families that are joining us this morning, we extend our deepest thank yous because your patience and understanding during this time at during our time at Elon really made this moment possible for us. So I'd like to apologize for all the missed dinners, the missed phone calls, and the skipped birthdays. 
and I ask that you continue to bear with us over the next two months as we prepare to take the February bar exam. Again, thank you for your steadfast support. We did this for you. To my fellow graduates, I want to say how proud I am of you. This has been a long and difficult journey. We've endured the weight of the, we've endured the weight of the mental and emotional labor that accompanies this process, which only continues to grow during the COVID pandemic and the assault on black lives. But even with all these obstacles we had to, we had to deal with during this time at Elon Law, particularly this year, I'm so proud of you. And my deepest hope is that you really embrace this moment because we did it. This year, at the very least, has taught us how resilient we can be. I trust that you will take this degree and continue to advocate for justice, equity, and all things good trouble. Congratulations again, friends. We did it. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing we call life. Sorry, y'all, I just couldn't resist throwing in a Prince quote being from Minnesota. I want to first thank everyone for electing me as the class speaker for this year's graduation ceremony. I feel truly honored to have been chosen, and so I'm going to do my best not to disappoint you all here today. So, in true Quinn fashion, let me tell you exactly what I think and how things went for me. Before I started law school, I had this vision of how things would be. I blame Legally Blonde, the paper chase, and my cousin Vinny for putting these silly notions in my head of law school and life as an attorney. Instead, what I encountered was nothing short of a disaster. My first day of law school, I remember the sheer terror I felt as Professor Perkins called Hannah, only for me to rest easy for a brief second as she then said, oh, sorry, I meant Quinn. I had intense heartburn the rest of the day. It's funny now, but at the time I was traumatized though I am sure not even one of you remembers this moment like I do, but instead have your own heartburn inducing moment. I came to law school with the horrible and dare I say reckless mentality that law school was going to come easy and naturally to me and that I wouldn't have to try as hard as everyone said. But boy, was I ever wrong. My first trimester grades came out and while I knew they weren't great, I thought, well, I guess I could do a whole lot worse. And that was my wake up call. I had what can only be described as an Elle Woods in a Playboy bunny costume moment where she realizes she needs to prove everyone wrong. From that moment on, I got my act together. I went to OAS. I did multiple practice essays and multiple choice per week. I outlined, I went and saw the professors. I mean, you name it and I did it. And I am sure that many of you joined me along this journey to better yourselves. When winter grades were released, there was a definite improvement, but I was still at risk of not making it through law school. So I kept it up. I kept doing all the things I had been doing and tried even harder than I had the previous two trimesters. And while it obviously worked because I'm still here, I'm not at the top of the class and that is fine with me. I am proud to be a member of this class and I know I have worked as hard as I could and tried my best and I'm sure that we can all say the same. But what is the point of my revealing this? Is it to show that I'm a bad student or that I don't try? That can't be it because I'm still here and getting a degree. Is it to prove a point? Well, maybe just a little. Or is it to show you all here and the world that despite not being number one, you are not less than anyone else or have less value? We are all sitting here today as graduates of law school something that less than 1% of the population of the United States can say. Now, I don't know about any of you, but that, that is enough for me. However, grades were not the only obstacle in my path. Another challenge was one that seems to occur and follow you through life in all areas. I have never felt like I fit in with anything and anyone my entire life. I again foolishly thought law school would be different, but I learned along the way that just because you don't fit into a group doesn't mean you don't fit in at all. I have been so fortunate to meet some of the best and most amazing people during my time in law school, who I am fortunate enough to call my best friends. These key people who know who they are have helped shape me into the student, person, and future attorney that I am today. I truly respect and hold in high esteem every single one of my classmates here today. 
Not only did we graduate from law school, but at the end of the day, we did it together. Together, through a global pandemic, distance learning, and a socially distanced graduation ceremony. It might be disappointing now, but imagine the stories we'll be able to share down the road. This can be our walked uphill both ways to class in the snow moment and a story we will all share for the rest of our lives. I also have a huge respect and appreciation for every single one of my professors. So whether I'm traveling the criminal law highway with Professor Friedland, going to Costa Rica instead of taking a property exam with Professor Chapman, or remembering that joinder and subject matter jurisdiction are separate analyses with Professor Perkins. These are the things I will remember the most about my professors. They have truly guided me along every step of this journey, and I could not be more grateful for their wisdom and help. Now, to wrap this whole spiel up, I would be remiss if I didn't end it the way that Elle Woods would have wanted. So, with these final words, I say, congratulations, class of 2020. We did it! My name is Andy Hiley. It's my pleasure to present this year's David Gergen Award for Leadership and Professionalism. The Gergen Award recognizes a member of the graduating class whose activities represent the principles of leadership and professionalism. This year's award winner received numerous nominations, all noting the extraordinary impact she has made both in the life of the law school and in the broader community. One nominator praised our recipient by stating that she is strong, determined, intelligent, and inspirational. There is more than ample evidence to support this description. Our recipient has led in many ways. She was elected by her fellow students to serve as a defender on the law school's honor council. She's provided extensive pro bono support to the law school's humanitarian immigration law clinic, assisting low-income refugees and asylum seekers in North Carolina. She has served as a moot court board member and as co-president of the Jewish Law Students Association. She organized a visit to the law school by a nationally renowned civil rights attorney to discuss issues of police abuse in the wake of several high profile incidents, both nationally and locally. The list goes on of all the ways that our recipient has left her mark at Elon Law School. The most frequently cited example of her leadership, however, involves the law school's People Not Property Project. This project is a statewide effort to transcribe, digitize, and make publicly available so-called slave deeds. Slave deeds are the legal documents that memorialize the transfer of enslaved people. Given that these documents were created in the 18th and 19th centuries, they are handwritten and extremely difficult to decipher. This year's Gergen Award winner led the effort to transcribe all 263 slave deeds recorded in Guilford County. She personally transcribed over 120 deeds and organized efforts where Elon Law students worked together to transcribe the balance. The result is that Guilford County is the first county in North Carolina to have digital searchable slave deeds. This is important for two reasons. First, it will allow academics and genealogists to learn more about the era. More importantly, however, these documents often represent the only written records pertaining to individuals whose scholar and author Ta-Nehisi Coates in his novel, The Water Dancer, calls the tasked. Making these documents more accessible helps to reclaim the stories of people who were literally treated as property recognizes the full humanity of these individuals and acknowledges the law's role in perpetuating the shame of slavery. After completing this work in Guilford County, our Gergen Award recipient turned to assisting the next set of student leaders in establishing relationships with other North Carolina counties to transcribe their slave deeds. As explained by one nominator, this year's Gergen Award recipient is one of those rare leaders who is willing and able to do the work herself, but who also sees the value and benefit of fully involving others and working collaboratively to accomplish a difficult task. Many of the issues our recipient has led on are difficult and emotionally unsettling. Nevertheless, she brings an energy and optimism to her work. Perhaps this is because of the lasting impact she has made by serving those in need 
and confronting historical injustices. For all these reasons, it's my pleasure on behalf of the Elon Law faculty to present the David Gergen Award for Leadership and Professionalism to Juliana Kober. Keeping everybody well, keeping on schedule, and keeping one eye on the future. Simple goals, we're not quite sure that they were accomplishable, but thanks to your contributions and many others, here we are. Congratulations, class of 2020. We gather today as a community at this 13th commencement of Elon Law to celebrate both professional and personal milestones for graduates in the class of 2020. And what a milestone this is for each of you. By earning your Juris Doctor, you are in rare company, shared by very few of your friends and neighbors. There are but a million practicing lawyers in our country of 330 million people. That matters for a lot of reasons. When you pass the bar exam and join this noble profession, you will be fiduciaries for others, you will be guardians of fact, you will be advocates for fairness and equal justice under law for all people regardless of color, creed, or class. We are a nation reliant on the rule of law, of a system of governance dependent on consent of the governed. Without fairness or without justice or without truth, Consent is impossible to peacefully acquire, let alone maintain. You are now needed more than ever. We have witnessed in this tumultuous year of disruption and frustration and loss a global pandemic that has taken the lives of nearly 300,000 Americans. We have borne the pain and heartache of our families and friends and colleagues and neighbors of color who have pushed our nation to examine our national history and how we can, indeed how we must, continue to advance the cause of anti-racism. And we have worked to uphold our system of self-governance in an election year rife with tension, distrust, disillusion. And yet, and yet we have been here before. 80 years ago, an earlier generation of young people experienced calamity, uncertainty, scarcity. They experienced disruption. As our country prevailed over the horrors and strife in World War II, the women and men who rationed food, planted victory gardens, went off to die on foreign soil in the fight against fascism, found that disruption can indeed lead to discovery and achievement. What now is known as the greatest generation opened up opportunities for women in the workforce, pushed forward the movement for civil rights, created the most vibrant and inclusive economy the world has ever known, dreamed and accomplished adventures to the moon and beyond. The greatest generation found common cause in creating a new way of life. They took heed in the words of the bard of my generation, Bruce Springsteen, by not losing their idealism even after they lost their innocence. And that is the opportunity you, class of 2020, have today. Use the disruption of 2020 to redefine who we are as a nation, as a people, and as a profession. Make 2020 the first year of the 21st century. Maintain your idealism even if you have lost your innocence. So be the greatest, fight for justice, Commit to safeguarding the rule of law. Protect the vulnerable. Speak the truth. Lawyers have that responsibility. And you now have that responsibility. So go forth and be the next greatest generation. We also must remember the sacrifices of those who brought you here today. Let us pause for a moment and remember the immortal lyrics of Lennon and McCartney. The love you take is equal to the love you make. Today we recognize your friends and family and supporters, without whom you would be less fortunate in your lives and certainly less celebratory today. Make sure you give them a socially distanced hug. And as we recognize the contributions of those who have made today possible, let us also pause to recognize the contributions of University Chaplain Jan Fuller. 
Chaplain Fuller has announced her retirement at the end of Elon University's spring semester, making today her grand finale at Elon Law. We are a better law school for the encouragement Chaplain Fuller has offered over the years in teaching us how to reflect deeply on our shared humanity and the responsibilities we all have to uplift all of those we encounter in our life journeys. Thank you, Chaplain Fuller, for your contributions to our success. And on a day for recognizing accomplishments and milestones, it is our pleasure to welcome a guest speaker who is a legal pioneer in his own right. Chief Judge Roger L. Gregory of the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit is no stranger to Elon. He is a proud Elon parent whose daughter is a 2016 graduate of the university. Chief Judge Gregory is a supporter of Elon and a supporter of Elon Law. Most recently when he presided over a session of the Fourth Circuit in the Elon Law courtroom in 2018. He is the only person in the history of the United States to be appointed to a federal appellate court by two presidents of different political parties. President Bill Clinton recess appointed him to the Court of Appeals in late 2000, and President George W. Bush commissioned his lifetime appointment in July 2001. That speaks volumes to the respect he has earned and enjoys from both sides of the aisle, from everyone. His work on the Fourth Circuit has been pivotal to some of the most high profile legal and constitutional questions confronting our country over the past two decades. He is a member of the Judicial Conference of the United States, and his past leadership positions include rector of Virginia Commonwealth University and president of the Old Dominion Bar Association. His awards include the National Conference of Christian and Jews Humanitarian Award, the National Bar Association's Gertrude E. Rush and Equal Justice Awards, the Washington Bar Association's Charles Hamilton Houston Merit Medallion, the Old Dominion Bar Association's L. Douglas Wilder Vanguard Award, the Thurgood Marshall College Fund Award of Excellence, and the University of Richmond School of Law's William Green Award for Professional Excellence. And that does not include all of them. A member of the prestigious American Law Institute, Chief Judge Gregory grew up in Virginia and graduated from Virginia State College and the University of Michigan Law School. Another distinction, and an important one, he is the first black jurist to sit on the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit. It is no understatement to say that Chief Judge Gregory's exemplary career and his commitment to service demonstrate the power of civility and respect in the legal profession. As such, I can think of no better person to leave you with final remarks as you complete your journey through law school Please join me in welcoming Chief Judge Roger L. Gregory to our commencement ceremony. Congratulations, everyone. It is my pleasure to address you, the honorees, the 2020 Elon Law Class. It is a pleasure to be here with you. I congratulate you for finishing the course, and may I say course is, you have put in the work, and you deserve to have this great honor and this great day. And I also congratulate and give my best wishes to your close family members and friends who are with you, because I know it's always a team effort, and that is, is very important. And believe me, you're going to need your loved ones through this journey, because your journey is just beginning. But it is an inward journey. It is one that you'll have to keep your focus, keep all your wits about you, and remember that you're entering a profession that is honorable, and you are about to embark on it. But let me say to you what Holmes said to the young conductor on the train. He was on the crowded train, and when he got on, the young conductor said, sir, where is your ticket? And he said, no, you're wrong. The question is not, where is my ticket? The question is, where am I going? Remember that. The world always wants to know, is your ticket punched? Do you have the right pedigree? 
what side of the tracks you were born on. Do you have everything straight, all your I's dotted and your T's crossed? But like Holmes, remember, that's not the question. The question is, where are you going? And I hope to inspire your journey a little bit today by briefly addressing you about some points that I found to be very important and I hope you will find in the years to come to be important to you. Let me say this. As a P-16, I get a little inside information because we get a newsletter for parents. And it was struck, I was struck by last month, uh, hashtag Elon Grateful, uh, the parent engagement team sent out a thankful message. And at the top of the list, what they were thankful for was graduates. But not just graduates, graduates that the world needs. And that's who you are. Not just graduates of law school, but you're graduates that the world needs. Now, when you talk about needs, you have to look at what is before you. And so often people overlook the small things. Thomas Carlyle said, the great mission in life is not to see what lies dimly at a distance but to do what lies clearly at hand. The needs of the world, the needs of your community, the needs of this nation are clearly at hand. You don't have to guess about, about what the future is because we don't know what it is. But as lawyers, I want you to know and I hope that you will focus on the needs and they are many. Right now we talk about lawyers, the number of lawyers, but the number of lawyers is kind of ironic access to justice still is a problem. Many people go without adequate legal representation. There are opportunities for you to fill that gap, to do it in a wonderful, creative way. And you've been well prepared because Elon Law has been innovative. They know that learning occurs also by doing and not just Socratic method. Indeed, you're like Emerson's American scholars because thought alone does not ripen into truth. So you've been engaged in residency placement with lawyers and judges and law firms and corporations and nonprofits and governmental agencies and seeing what it looks like with boots on the ground. It gives you a head start. When I was in law school, I did legal aid and volunteered at Ann Arbor Legal Aid. And my first jury trial was in my third year of law school i never forget that for a legal aid client. And I took a class in criminal appellate practice where we wrote habeas briefs for prisoners in Jackson State Prison, at the time one of the world's largest wall prisons. And I never forgot that. Don't forget those focus that you had, those experiences you had at Elon, looking at what the world looks like and finding out those needs. That's so important because you have been prepared and you're ready. Now, there are things you're going to have to do. You're going to have to be able to adapt. You have to be resilient and you have to be innovative. Remember, you can't control the winds and you can't control the current, but you can always adjust your sails. And if you're going to get to your goals in life, you must make those adjustments. Elon has been innovative in terms of delivery of law, sc uh, law school education, which you have been a recipient of. Don't forget that. Be innovative. Now, for example, I'm talking to you from a virtual standpoint. Now, if you think about it and be creative, that's your advantage. Because it won't be the stem winding speeches of old that will carry the day. It will be people who can address the camera and a focus and those kind of things is as one uh, judge recently said, Judge Lisa Rao, that it's like taking a play and making it in a movie. What was once on the stage now is right up front. So sometimes that boisterous type delivery, it won't work because you're right in someone's face, right in the juror's face. So there are new techniques and you're right on top of that. That's so important. So always find a way to be creative uh, for example, just like big box stores are very difficult now. 
Well, there are a lot of firms with a lot of infrastructure. Now it would be a matter of delivering in a virtual reality. We're not going to go back after we pass this pandemic period. We're going to keep these type things. People, clients are going to insist upon not flying across the country to do depositions. You don't have to have big law firms and, or, or necessary offices. There can be all kinds of virtual opportunities for you to be wherever you want to be and where you need to be. Keep those things. Be innovative, but always searching to try to find a way to be a graduate that the world needs and to supply those things. Uh, be resilient. Sometimes you got to move forward, and it's not going to always be easy. Bounce back. Recover. I remember that uh, I had a case once, and uh, a woman was very surprised that I had been appointed to represent her. And we have a different cultural background, and she was so surprised, she almost just, her heart dropped, because she didn't realize that she would be appointed, an African-American would be appointed to represent her. But I was undaunted by that. Because as Beyonce says, she must not know about me because she did, she would have been happy. But the point is this, my assignment was more important than her assessment. Everybody's not gonna assess you correctly. They're gonna misjudge you. They're gonna think that uh, you may not have what it takes. You do have what it takes, you've been prepared. Not in arrogance, but in the strength of humility. Humility means I can learn from everyone. I'm not greater than anybody, but I'm not beneath anybody. But knowing that the human needs and the nuances of the human experience are important, and that's what you're addressing, that's what you've been prepared for, and that's why Elon has graduates that the world needs, and you can fulfill that. In a broader sense, the role of a lawyer. Alexis de Tocqueville in the 1830s wrote a book called American Democracy. And he talked about lawyers being an aristocracy. You see, you didn't know that you're an aristocrat. And you can tell your friends and your family you're an aristocrat now. But not an aristocrat by birth, but one by skill and ability. But, but, but he said something else that's so important. He said that America's greatness is not because it's more enlightened than other countries. The greatness of America is that it has the ability to Prepare, repair its faults. And lawyers, he felt, were the best barriers against the faults. Be a repair of those faults. When we talk about equal justice under the law, you must maintain and work for equal justice under the law. Like Brian Stevenson said in the Equal Justice Initiative, he said that the struggle to protect the interests of the rejected and those who are in prison is always difficult. But the good thing about it that the struggle does not turn on the skepticism and fear of those who doubt the power of justice. It turns on those who have the spirit and hope and still believe in it. Always believe in justice. Work hard, be creative, be resilient, adapt to new changes. Be the new lawyer, the true 21st century lawyer who uses technology to serve our work, but never to surmount our will. Because the human will is important and every person is important. And your law practice should make sure that everyone has room at the table. And another thing too, talking about at the table, be a voice for those who will never get to the table. Those who will never have the opportunity to go to law school or graduate from college or have the world believe they can do anything. Be a voice for them. Advocate for justice. Advocate to make sure that the world knows that equal justice under the law is not just for a few people, but for everyone. And be global about it. And I say to you, if you do these things, then I think you'll be able to say what Augustus, the first emperor of Rome, could not. You see, because when he went to Rome, he said he built great temples, Mars and Apollo. And when he left, he said that I came to Rome, I saw it made, I found it made of brick, and I left it made of marble. But how much more noble will be your boast as lawyers when you finish your days in practice? And you can say this, as Henry Broham said, the Scottish jurist, that I came to the law 
I found it a sealed book and I left it a living letter. When I came to the law, I found it the patrimony of the rich, but I left it the inheritance of the poor. When I came, I found law to be a two-edged sword of craft and oppression, but I left it the staff of honesty and the shield of innocence. God bless you, Elon, class of 2020. Go forth and go with a strong will, knowing that you are prepared, you are ready to adapt, to move forward, and make real this idea of constitutional justice for everyone. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chief Judge Roger Gregory, for your address and for the wise counsel. All candidates for the Juris Doctor degree will please stand at your respective locations. Madam President, those candidates who stand at their respective locations have fulfilled all of the requirements, both as to quantity and quality for the Juris Doctor degree. It is my pleasure to present them for conferral of their degree. By virtue of the authority of the state of North Carolina vested in me through the Board of Trustees of Elon University, I confer upon you as a graduating class and as individuals the degree of Juris Doctor, which entitles you to all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. It is now my honor to present the Elon Law Class of 2020. The following students have completed the requirements for the Juris Doctor degree. Kevin Lionel Acuna, Appalachian State University. William Shaver Adams, the University of South Carolina. Jasmine Austin Allen, of Virginia Commonwealth University. Ryan Martin Allshouse from East Carolina University. Congratulations. Congratulations. Ava Rose Almarez of the Queen's University of Charlotte. Megan Gabrielle Anderson of Florida State University. Sean Michael Arnold of the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Edwina Avberry of the George Washington University. Thank you, Mommy. Kayla Backus of Fayetteville State University. Rand Maxwell Baker of Ferrum College. All right, buddy, you're official. Woohoo, congrats, Max. Very proud of you. Money, 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 money. Melanie Balbeck of North Carolina State University. Groovy Barrot of North Carolina State University. Kia LaShawn Barrett of the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Madeline Baruch of the University of Central Florida. Megan Bennett of Anderson University of South Carolina. Samuel Bennett of the University of Florida. Jared Evan Bodenschatz of the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Haley Rochelle Bowles 
of Samford University. Tanner Nathaniel Brantley of Morehouse College. Molly Lyle Brazel of Appalachian State University. Cheer, guys. Catherine Lynn Brock of North Carolina State University. Kelly Elizabeth Broski of Lock Haven University of Pennsylvania. Melissa Ray Buck of Elmira College. Sarah Victoria Bird of Appalachian State Yay! University. Yay! Amber L. King, Florida State University. Michaela Kaliri of Westfield State University. Hollyann Marissa Callahan of Christopher Newport University. Mackenzie Adair Carpenter of Clemson University. Haley Roberson Carroll of Wake Forest University. Yeah. Brandon Lee Casey of East Tennessee State University. Julianne Castro, University of South Carolina. Ty Sierra Simone Chisholm Hensley of Wake Forest University. Sarah Alexandra Church of the University of South Carolina. Brian Matthew Sindrich of the State University of New York at New Paltz. Christine Elizabeth Klein of North Carolina State University. Victoria Charlene Corey of San Jose State yeah. University. Yeah. Hunter David Cornelius, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Anissa Cottrell of Longwood University. Tyler Jeremy Crema of St. Joseph's College. Timothy Devin Darty of Hamden Sydney College. Tyler Demery of the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Congratulations, sir. Andrew Ryan Denoff of Guilford College. Taylor DeStefano of West Virginia University. Andrew Philip Dietrich of Sewanee, the University of the South. Samantha D. Dudley of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Kirsten Corinna Durand Johnson of Florida Atlantic Yay! University. Sarah Loman Ensley of the University of North Georgia. Julia James Urey of Asbury University. Michael John Fiore of Clemson University. Victoria Ashley Ford of Elon University. Chris Wallace Graham of Rutgers University. Alexis Janelle Grossman, Georgia Southern University.
Emily Lynn Gracio of Adelphi University. Madison Nicole Guthrie of California State University at Monterey Bay. Alicia Brianna Harris of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Tamisha Dominique Henley of the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Cynthia Elizabeth Hernandez the University of Maryland at College Park. What? Yeah! 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 Kelby K. Hicks of the North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. Jack Everett Holbrook of the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Yeah, yeah. Hey! Mary Melissa Hoover. Appalachian State University. Rachel Eleanor James of the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Kirsten Jontavia Jameson of the University of South Carolina at Columbia. Victoria Jimenez from the John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Peter Galbraith Kelly III of Sacred Heart University. Zachary James Kiffmeyer of the University of Tennessee. Heather M. Kendley of the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. <laughs> Juliana Rose Cober from the University of Rochester. Brooke Taylor Lamakio from Appalachian State University. Courtney Beckworth Lockerman from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Michael T. Logsdon II from West Virginia Westland. Hannah Quinn Lundquist from the University of Wisconsin Stout. <laughs> Christopher Lambert Martineau from East Carolina University. Cheers. Anthony T. Masters of Appalachian State University. Sarah Elizabeth McIntyre of Appalachian State University. Vincent McKinney of Georgia Southern University. John Walker McNabb of Brigham Young University at Idaho. Alden Rebecca Minnick of the University of Georgia. Ty Eric Morley of the University of Nevada at Reno. Jessica Lynn Norum of Furman University. McCatherine Marie Painter of the College of Charleston. Benjamin Sanders Parsons, <laughs> New York University. Clancy Helen Teresa Phillips, the University of New England. Kyra Pippinger, of the Indiana University Purdue at Fort Wayne. Rachel Marie Pomeroy, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. <laughs> Salvatore Popolillo III from Monmouth University. Travis James Poulis of 
Guilford College. Anna Marie Powell, Clemson University. Okay. Cher Morana Lyles Quibang of Florida State University. Dylan Michael Quinn of Lees McRae College. <laughs> George Duncan Regan Jr. of Campbell University. Paige Taylor Richardson of the University of Georgia. Shane Bryce Roberts of Furman University. Casey Taylor Robinson of the Westchester University of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Catherine Joyce Romo of Creighton University. Aaliyah Janai Russell of the Virginia Commonwealth University. <laughs> Yay! All right. Jazz Autumn Serriera of Fort Hayes State University. Connor John Schramm, the University of Central Florida. Christopher Ryan Schroeder, the University of hey, Nevada, Las Vegas. There are no Las words Vegas. to tell you how proud I am of you. Congratulations, love you so much, Mom. Christopher, congratulations. Very proud of you and love you very much, Dad. Uncle! Olivia Jocelyn Setzer, of the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Crystal Leanne Schreiner, of Arizona State University at Glendale. Simerjeet Singh, of Michigan State University. Alexandria Danielle Smith, the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Brandon P. Smith, the University of Florida. Christopher Grant Smith, of East Tennessee State University. Evan Smith, Western Carolina University. Kristen M. Spate at Wingate University. Rachel May Starnes, <laughs> University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Ashley Elizabeth Stewart of the University of Mississippi. Victoria Lynn Stout, Central Michigan University. Spencer Marie Sullivan, Arkansas State University. Evan Austin Tarver of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey. Megan D. Wilson Bost, Emory and Henry College. Grant Saxon Tecker of the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Almeric Leander Thomas of Gardner Webb University. Daniel H. Walsh, Florida State. I would like to thank University. everyone at Elon for all of the work that you do every day to help 
People like me and the rest of this class change our lives in one of the most meaningful ways that we can. Thank you so much and good luck everyone. Kirby K. Walters of the College of Charleston. Yay! 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 Benjamin Scott Warren of the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Hannah Nina Whaley of Lander University. Hunter B. Winstead, Liberty University. Robin Still Wintringham of Duke University. Jacob Willoughby Wood of the Citadel. <laughs> Laura E. Yanka, the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. The following students are graduating with honors. Our summa cum laude graduates are Ben Parsons and Travis Poulos. Our magna cum laude graduates are Christine Klein, Hunter Cornelius, Michael Fiore, Catherine Romo, Spencer Sullivan, and Hunter Winstead. And our cum laude graduates are William Adams, Kirsten Duran Johnson, Tori Ford, Juliana Kober, Michael Logston, Shane Roberts, Evan Smith, Daniel Walsh, and Laura Yonka. Thank you for celebrating the class of 2020's achievements with us here today. Members of the class of 2020, today we celebrate your outstanding accomplishment. And in addition to the great pride among the family and friends who join us virtually today, I offer my personal congratulations. The team of faculty and staff at Elon Law who have supported you and cheered you on during this process, join me in celebrating this culmination of your hard work. You have learned from a rigorous and experiential law curriculum focused on excellence and outstanding experience facilitated by faculty, staff, and the dean and enriched by partnerships in Greensboro and beyond. On this day of graduation, I charge you to be resilient and steadfast, like the mighty oaks for which Elon is named, Hebrew for oak. Oaks are important at Elon, as they symbolize our community's strength, strength that is now within each of you. I hope that each time you see an acorn or a full-grown oak, that you are reminded of the personal leadership that you have developed during your studies at Elon, strengths and skills that I'm counting on you to use to make a difference in the world. Today, as we envision each of you launching into exciting career paths, I charge you to carry Elon and our values with you always. Honesty, be truthful in your work and in your relationships. Integrity, be trustworthy, fair, and ethical. Responsibility, be accountable for your actions. Respect, be civil, and value the dignity of each person. Use Elon's values when you encounter those hard choices ahead. Lean on them and each other when you need to reason things out. Remember, we are forever bound together by these values. You, me, your classmates, the faculty, and Elon. I hope you display your Elon diploma proudly in your homes or your offices and stay connected to your new alma mater as Elon alumni. You are lifelong members of the Elon family. 
Members of the class of 2020, you are prepared and you are determined and you are educated. You are ready, ready to be those change makers who will shape the future. This is what Elon expects from you today and what the world needs from you tomorrow. Congratulations, class of 2020, and long live Elon. What an achievement, class of 2020. You did it, congratulations. We're so proud of you. We know you're gonna do great things. Good luck, keep on going. And from your admissions throughout your two and a half years, I've enjoyed working with you. I look forward to staying in touch with you. Good luck with everything. Welcome to the ranks of the Juris Doctor, now that you are JDs. Congratulations on graduating law school. It's such a tremendous accomplishment. You should be proud of yourselves. Be well, take care, good luck on the bar exam, and congratulations again. Congratulations, graduates. My advice to you is every day, read some, write some, and laugh as much as you can. Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. We here at the Elon Law Legal Services Program are very proud of you graduates. We know that these are challenging circumstances, but you've graduated from law school. So, congratulations, everybody. Class of 2020, thank you for the privilege of helping you on the road to graduation. And I look forward to hearing about all of your accomplishments. Be safe and well. Congratulations, Class of 2020. I look forward to all that you'll accomplish in your careers as Elon Law alumni. Congratulations, graduates. I'm very happy for you reaching this milestone in your careers. Looking forward to seeing what you do next. Let me know how I can help you in the future. Again, congratulations on a job well done. Congratulations, class of 2020. We're so proud of you. Can't wait to hear about all of your adventures and good luck on the bar. You're gonna do great. Congratulations, you guys. Good luck on the bar exam. Congratulations, today we're celebrating you and your graduation from law school. I know you're gonna pass the bar exam. Keep in touch and keep being you. Happy graduation. We are super proud of all of you. Good luck on the bar exam and moving into law practice. Congratulations, class of 2020. Now it's your turn to change the world for the better. No pressure. Congratulations, class of 2020. I am very proud of you and also congratulations to your family, your parents and your friends as well. This is a great accomplishment and I wish you all the best in your future. Good luck, go make us proud. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I wanna say that it's just been my absolute privilege to work with you and to get to know you. And I wish you the very best professional and personal success. And I hope that you will stay in touch. Hi everyone. Getting your JD is the best way I can think of to end up this crazy year. So congratulations to all of you. I am very proud of you. I wish I could have seen you walk across the stage in person, but these are weird times we're living in. And I hope that I made your journey a little bit easier. I look forward to hearing from you in the future. If you need anything, I'm here and I hope to hear great things about you down the road. Congratulations, members of the class of 2020. We're proud of you. We're proud of your resilience, and we wish you all success in the future. Best of luck. Hello, attorneys in waiting. We came to Elon Law School together in 2017. I met all of you during orientation. I taught some of you in ILS and in bar exam foundations, and I got to know several of you well. I am confident that each of you will enjoy productive careers as members of the bar and leaders in your community. I look forward to hearing great things about you. May God bless and keep you. Congratulations, everybody. You did it. You finished up at Elon Law. I'm very, very happy for you, and I leave you with two quotes. One is by Gandhi, be the change you wish to see. And the other is by Oscar Wilde, another one that has been company for me along the years. It's be yourself. Everybody else is already taken. Congratulations again. Keep in touch.